Hello everyone and I hope you're doing well. So today's video is going to be about literature review. I get a lot of questions about it. My students ask me how can I do it. It's really difficult. Sometimes students find it like a boring part of their research. And also students who study research methodology, they have a lot of issues concerning literature review. So this video is going to be different, a bit different from all the rest of the videos. It's like I'm going to read for you my lecture and at the same time you can treat it as kind of kind of a uh, kind of revision also so this can be kind of a podcast also it's going to take a long time it's going to take a time of course the video is going to be lengthy so i would like you to enjoy so please grab a cup of coffee and and enjoy with me this lecture so let's start literature review so a literature review is what is simply described as a written summary of books, journal, articles, and different documents, all of which account for the current state of knowledge about a certain topic. So this is at least what everyone think, thinks about it. However, such kind of definitions to literature review takes a narrow perspective. Consider it as what? As a mere account and application of existent body of knowledge. This is exactly what happened with most of students. They kind of provide like just simply duplicating all the knowledge they, they find and summarizing. That's why most of the time their work is simply so boring. Now, compounding the matter, many university students and novice researchers commit the same mistake by reducing the section of literature review to a simple State to a statement of facts, rendering their work dull and often repetitive. This is why this is why it's really difficult. So, writing here is merely the end result of a literature review, and this is so important. You need to know that when you write, down when you write it, that's the real end result of it. The process is a different matter. So. Uh, literature review, which should, uh, which should be perceived as what, as an activity in research, and that's why it's so important in this regard. Kumar, is, uh, I would recommend this reference, indicates that literature review is an integral part of the research process and makes a valuable contribution to almost every operational step. It has value even before the step, before the first step, that is when you are merely thinking about research questions that you may want, and. I do remember that one of the questions in the PhD entrance exam was, what is the first step in, in, in research? And often, even sometimes teachers mistake this by saying it's finding a research problem. Yeah, but even how can I find a research problem? And we come to that. And I do remember at last hit question was, that why starting a research, why starting a research is really difficult? and how it, why it's difficult and mostly it's related to literature review and I will explain and explain how and why. Now Komar's view aligns with the idea that a literature review should not be considered a mere step in research but an activity that has to be undertaken from the very onset of research or the very beginning of research. I often trick my students and ask them like uh, what is the place of literature review? Is it at the beginning or at the end or which step? And often they, sometimes they get the mistake it's the second step or the third step and this is really wrong. Actually, as I just said, it's an activity that we do that we do throughout the whole uh, research process. So most important today, what are we going to talk about is the functions. What are the functions of literature review? Now, subsequently, the functions of a good review of literature have to be linked with the process of research methodology, starting with the stage in which a study is just some idea to a final step or step of report writing. Reviewing literature is rather necessary and helps in making refined research. In this regard, a literature review has the following function. So, as we said, it's linked to the entire process of research, of research methodology, starting from that very basic uh, abstract idea once you start your research to the final step which is writing writing your writing the report so let's talk let's talk about the first one which is conceptualization now whether one is engaged in pure or applied research often the starting point of any scientific endeavor is an unclear idea of a new phenomenon or a solution 
or a certain problem. This is how we how we do research. We start with either a phenomena that is so new, or we want to talk about a certain solution to a problem, or even sometimes just an unclear idea. Now, unfortunately, unrefined ideas in research are hard to express and can be confusing. That's very arduous to develop. Hence comes the importance of conceptualization. Of course, when I say conceptualization, it's like fancy vocabulary for the word thinking. And at the end, it's all about thinking. Now, according to New Newman, 2014, page 2005, conceptualization in research refers to the process of developing clear, rigorous, systematic, conceptual definitions for abstract ideas, a concept. In this respect, the primary goal behind the reviewing literature is to turn abstract constructs and refine them into conceptual or theoretical definitions. The process requires extensive reading and consulting experts so as research, uh, research is able to render a clear idea into conceptual definition. I'm going to provide an example here. Most of the time, my students come to me and they tell me, sir, I have this idea and, and I didn't find resources or I even know how to start with it. Give you an example. So one of my students tell me, so how about, for example, if we teach in a classroom, in a language classroom, and we provide like in the instruction in the mother tongue, let's say, for example, in this case, we will in Arabic, and we provide, and our students or learners are uh, asked to provide their answers in English. And I said, okay, this idea is good, but we have a, a concept for it. There is a term for it. The term is a translanguaging classroom. See, the moment I gave this term to the student translanguaging classroom, I have, in fact, facilitated the whole process because the moment you try to Google it, you try to go and ask an AI chat box about it, you will find the definitions, you find what it, what is the theories behind it, how can it can, can be used in a classroom. So everything now is so easy. And this is exactly why, this is why exactly so many students, when they start their research, they come to me and said, sir, uh, I have a problem in finding resources. I, find, I have this topic, but I didn't find any book. And there's no problem. It's not the book because 2024, I'm sure there will be tons of articles, tons of books. And but the problem in you, you don't, you haven't formulated your ideas into concrete concept, concept. And this is why why it is really problematic. Now, particularly at this at the stage of conceptualization, a researcher is not expected to write a formal literature review. Most of the writing will be limited to note taking, and this is so important. At, th at this stage, we are not talking about you are writing a formal literature review, but it's simply you are taking notes. So, deep, thoughtful, and reflective reading at this level ensures that the researcher will be able to think of the various possible perspectives of the phenomena. In fact, and an experienced, an experienced, uh, sorry, an experienced researcher, this has to be fixed. An experienced researcher is probably going to form decisions about the whole process of research at this point. Yeah, this is so important. In fact, the moment you have like, you have the concept, you have the definitions, you have the theory. Actually, you have everything because you will have like the methodology to conduct your research. You will have any kind of limitation. So everything is there. It's like if you have done this process well and you sit with your supervisor because that person, I always say the supervisor job is really at this level. That's first meeting usually I have with my student. I explain everything. What's the concept? What to look for? What to not look for? Uh, how is everything is going to be formed? But this is why it's so important uh, this step. Now we go to feasibility of research, which is the second function. Now it is recommended practice for researchers to conduct what is referred to as feasibility study, which is a piece of research carried out mainly to address the one question. Can this study be done? Of course, this is a rather separate and a long topic. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about something else. The interest here is to benefit is the benefit of conducting literature review on deciding whether a piece of research is feasible or not. In this vein, in relation to the stage of conceptualization, sorry, when a researcher is able to turn unclear ideas into full-fledged research problems, only then it would be clear if the problem has been tackled before or not. 
And here, a lot of students, I would give you example, for example, many university students get too excited about the idea of research only to discover that it's already in the literature with a different labeling. And this is so important, as I said. Students come to me and say, okay, this is a new topic, I have a new idea. But when, when they are faced or with the the concept, we find like so many students, they have worked with this work. Now, an earlier review of the literature would also divulge the potential complexities that might arise with the research. Based on previous work, a researcher can assess whether the intended study is feasible in terms of the resources available. Therefore, an experienced researcher would place considerable importance to review of the literature at an early stage as a decision made would ensure effective and efficient research. And this is why I said when it comes to when it comes to conceptualization, it's very important to take your time to think carefully about the whole process if i am starting my research just to realize that uh, i won't have resources the resources may be money maybe access then you really need to stop doing your research and you change the topic now let's go to the another the number three which is bordering and limiting the research often embarking on research involves dealing with what we call sub questions with questions and the sub questions are the sub problems which are usually so important and constitute what we call the skeleton of the whole research. These sub-questions also are frequently the resource of the most convolution research the researcher goes uh, research, uh, goes into. Sorry. Thus, a good review of literature is rather necessary to outline the intended studies by setting boundaries. Of course, decision to delineate a study would either limit or expand the original idea of the research. What do I mean here? You sometimes I come to students, they come to me and they said, OK, I want to start doing this research. And I said, OK, this is this. OK, this is a good topic. Then I say, OK, this topic, I can do it in an article with maybe five pages. I mean, you have like one question, maybe one sub question. I mean, you need to expand the topic. And here there is the need to add maybe more, more, uh, let's say more sub, sub sub questions to the research as if I'm expanding the whole work. And, or sometimes quite the opposite. Students come to me and said, okay, sir, I have this research and I have the, these questions. Often I find five, six questions. I said, okay, that's quite a lot. I mean, to, to study this, you need at least two years, three years. This is a good for a PhD, PhD uh, thesis, but not for a master dissertation. So here comes the idea of limiting the scope of the, uh, of the research. Now, let's move to the next idea, which is understanding the current state of the literature which is very important now most of the time most of what is mentioned above about literature review is done in an informal way mostly by reading taking notes and asking experts however in research there is the need for systematic review of literature that is formally written and here comes to the idea of most students wait which is reading and summarizing etc in the letter the researcher is is required to what to demonstrate a deeper understanding of the topics by providing what are called state of the art review that is updated review about the topic highlighting what the research gap critically evaluate and synthesizing the literature i'm going to explain all this now literature reviews are found at the beginning of most research papers whether a journal article or a dissertation or a doctoral thesis now the main reason behind this placement is that the literature review is supposed to show the reader the current and emerging trends in particular topic all of which will be presented in the form of a written report. However, this section sometimes is underestimated, and here comes the problem. In particular, by university students and novice researchers who treat the part, this part or this part as kind of a mere summary of the sources they use. And this is exactly the issue. I have found this problem either with new, with novice researchers and in, in their doctoral thesis and also a lot of master dissertation. Now, indeed, a review of previous finding of a topic is often, is only means to an end since the an end goal is to find a missing piece, that's the gap, 
in a literature or what is referred to as a research gap. The latter denotes a problem or a question that has not been addressed by any of the existing studies. Nonetheless, finding a research gap is an arduous task that entails what? Putting pieces of information together, much more like pieces of jigsaw, in order to divulge the missing bits. What do I mean here? Look, for example, I want to show the gap. How can I show the gap? Often to show a gap on that there is a problem in the literature, you need to put all what you have found. For example, I'm going to provide you with definitions, definition one, two, three, four, four definitions. And let's say, for example, you are going to provide new definitions. And by comparing these definitions, you will say that, okay, there is a missing piece in all the definition. This is how we find a research gap. Sometimes research gap is not a gap, etc. Maybe you find kind of contradiction. Let's say, for example, you are going to gather 10 definitions and the 10 definitions you find like they are grouped into two. Let's say, for example, one, five definitions with a certain idea or, and five definitions with another idea. So you find like conflicting results. Maybe this is going to be a gap in your research. Now, dealing with the extensive, now let me carry on. Dealing with the extensive information about a certain provide, about a certain provides a researcher a broad perspective, which enables him not only to discover the missing pieces of information, but also to further critically evaluate and compare the existing literature. The result will be an autumn on sorry, bibliography in which the researcher provides critical synthesis of the literature for this endeavor. A researcher needs to do what? And I'm going to stress these because they are very important points. So first one is search and summarize the relevant and up-to-date resources. So this is most students they only do this, but this is the only, but this is only one. Uh, it's only uh, one function. Now what? Compare and contrast sources, indicated similarities, and pointing out discrepancies. This is so important in many research because you need to start with the idea what we have and we need to compare them to find like what, what do we have missing problem or there is a problem. Now critically evaluate each source and its contribution to the literature and, and its relation to the theme of the study. Now, I have to pause a moment and and I'm going to focus on this. When I say critically evaluate, uh, most students, they think they have the ability even to evaluate. And actually, you can't evaluate because you are a novice researcher and you don't have ability to, create, to criticize when it comes to literature review. But critically doing what? When I provide you, let's say, five definitions for of a certain problem, and I'm going to look for a person or an, a researcher criticizing another definition. So actually, I'm not the one criticizing or evaluating. Actually, I'm using another piece of knowledge from somewhere that criticized that definition. This By this, I'm doing what? Kind of evaluating and in the same time, critically analyzing. Because we know that in most of the time when you find a piece of information, we find, for example, one school of thought goes, goes with one idea, that another school of thought goes with another idea, so it really helps to take all the perspective. Even, for example, when we talk about didactics, we talk about teaching and learning theories, and or we're talking about, uh, even when we talk about literature theories, we always find, like, for example, one theory and one theory contradicts, contradicts in the other one. So this is very important to to add in your work. Now, we need to what also integrate all what we said before, providing a sound argument that reflects the current state of the topic. That's also important. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here. And of course, we are going to continue uh, continue talking about this. I hope you like this video. I really need your opinion concerning that. If you have reached this far, please subscribe and follow us on Facebook. So thank you so much and goodbye.